Hi friends, I am so excited to be connecting with you today with Teaching Basics 101 through K-State. I'm gonna be talking to you about communication home to our parents, guardians, and caregivers. I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Stephanie Lane. I have taught for the last nine years, um, four of them in Clay Center at Garfield Elementary. I'm currently moving into a school administration role. I am a regional Kansas State Teacher of the Year, a Horizon Award winner, and my favorite thing to brag about, a Kansas State alumni of 2013. So I'm gonna start off with some kind of communication 101 basics. First, I wanna thank you for everything you're doing. Being a teacher is an amazing thing and it takes a lot of work. Communication is the one thing that kind of scares people often with communicating home, communicating with students sometimes, and even with their peers. So I wanna challenge you to make a shift in your mindset. We need to go from my classroom, my students, to ours. It's a collaboration piece and a connection piece that really makes communication its very best. I also wanna let you know that it's okay to be uncomfortable and nervous when you are communicating home. It's a hard thing to do sometimes. There's hard conversations, there's scary situations that occur, and sometimes we're just nervous in general reaching out to those caregivers. But I'm hoping this video will allow you to have some great tips and ideas that you can use moving forward. So first, let's recognize some of these hard conversations. Sometimes it's just a new conversation with a new family you haven't met before. You're not really sure what to say, how to act, what things you need to do. So I challenge you to just start easy by introducing yourself and making those connections. The next thing to do is find those little celebrations you can do, just the smallest things that you can find to celebrate on a kid or a student, whatever's going on in their life within the classroom, to just reach home, reach out and share with them all the great things they're doing. And the last bit of communication 101 piece I wanna share is that it's okay not to know. I think so early as a new teacher, I thought I have to have every answer. When they ask me, I have to know what to say. But honestly, they would rather know the truth and understand what's really going on. So if you say, you know, I don't know the answer to that, but let me find someone who does. Or can I get back to you in a couple days when I have that answer? That's gonna go a lot smoother than giving them an answer you think is correct and then finding out it's not. So be okay with not knowing. As we move through this, I wanna share a quote with you kind of on each little topic that I share. So the first one I wanna share with you is, education is a shared commitment between dedicated teachers, motivated students, and enthusiastic parents with high expectations. High expectations is the key there, and we'll get back to that in a moment. So some tips for success. This is one of my favorite things. I have used it every year as a teacher and will continue to use it as an administrator. It was taught to me my very first year as a teacher from my principal, and it's the idea of an emotional bank. So with an emotional bank, there are, just like a normal bank, deposits and withdrawals. And so as we move through communication, we have to figure out the things that are going to strengthen or build up that bank account and what might deplete it. So I'd like to talk to you about some examples. Deposits are going to be those opportunities that you connect early with your parents or guardians and you make those strong connections right away. You reach out, you introduce yourself, you get to know the family. Any positive communication you make, that's gonna be another deposit in the bank. So even if it's super small, oh, I loved their shirt today, I loved their attitude, I loved that they walked in and were so excited about math class, and it's gonna look different at each age range, but finding those ways to make those deposits, not only with the parents and guardians, but with those students as well. Another way you can do this is community involvement. This is going to look different in each community, but I know for some of our small rural communities like my own, showing up is a big thing to do. You can come to basketball games, baseball games, um, church dinners, anything like that where you can just be a face within the crowd supporting your students. That goes a long way with adults and parents in the community because they feel like you are valuing their student, and you are by showing up. Um, another thing that's a really easy deposit that sometimes gets overlooked is clear expectations within the classroom and with parents. So early on, I like to call home within the first two weeks of school each year. Now I have a small homeroom. I just have 22 students, so it's pretty manageable for me to call. 
But this year as an administrator, I'm going to do the same thing with 180 kids. I'm going to make that phone call home and, and have that connection within those first two, three weeks to reach out and say, you know, what do you need from me as the principal or the teacher? What can I do to support you? How is your student feeling about school? Are they feeling valued and loved and supported? That early on connection is another great deposit in that bank account. This is an easy one, but sometimes hard for all of us. I know me as a big talker is listening, just taking the opportunity to be okay with being silent and allowing the other part party to just talk and make that deposit back into your bank as well. Building trust and then again, building those personal connections, reaching out and not knowing the student and the family just on that surface level, but really getting to know them. I'm not asking you to become friends with them. I'm asking you to have a professional connection with them so when something is off with that student or they're not behaving the way they typically do, you know something's going on and you have that safe trust between that family and yourself that you can reach out and say, hey, I noticed Timmy is having a tough day. Just wanted to check in. That deposit goes a really long way because those withdrawals are coming. We all know they are. Hi everyone, Dr. Lori Levine here from Kansas State University. I just wanted to take a moment and say thank you for being interested in the teaching profession and thank you for all you are doing to serve students and your community. If you don't yet have your bachelor's degree in education and you're seeking teacher licensure, I would invite you to check out our Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education online degree. This is a powerful, fully accredited program taught by faculty at Kansas State University. This online program is available to anyone in all 50 states, as well as internationally. We make transferring credits into K-State easy, and we have a number of generous scholarships, grants, and financial aid available. We pride ourselves on teaching strong pedagogical practices, having close relationships with our students, and peer support as you start your teaching career. You can check out more information about our award-winning program by visiting the website listed below. Thank you. So a withdrawal then would be an example of, you know, poor communication. We've all had those days, something slipped by, we've made a mistake, we've forgotten to reach out about something. Those, those moments happen in our career. And that's okay because when we've paved that way for those strong deposits early on, it allows for those moments or those slip ups to happen. Other withdrawals might be negative communication. When you do have to reach out and say, today was not great. We were not safe in our environment. We were not kind to our friends. Uh, we were disrespectful to our adults. Those moments happen and the way we word it is what makes that, that interaction so powerful and that communication clear. And those deposits then that have been laid so carefully in the beginning of the year, don't allow that bank account to empty because it's still so strong that foundation is there. Not following through is another withdrawal. When you tell a parent or a guardian or a family member that you're going to do something for their student, they trust you and they believe that you will. So doing your best to remind yourself, set an alarm, send yourself an email, write a post-it note, whatever you need to do to remind yourself to follow through on what you said you would do. Unclear expectations, that just keeps coming back up. When parents or guardians feel you have unfair, unclear expectations within the classroom and, and their kiddo or grandkid is coming home every day and sharing things that feel unsafe or unfair to them, that becomes kind of a division between our withdrawals and our deposits. It's a tough situation to kind of navigate. So when you have those clear expectations from the beginning of the year and you build them with your students, you can just share those out with your adults in, in your classroom community and let them know what, what you expect from your students and from them even as parents and visitors within your building. The last thing I would say is perceived mistreatment. Sometimes parent perspective and even student perspective is different than your own. Your intent is always to treat your students so well and love on those friends that you have in your classroom but perspective is unique and allows each uh, student and adult to feel differently about the situation. And so remembering those things allows you to kind of have a good perspective on what they're feeling so that you can swing back around and make that positive communication and follow up as you need. So our quote for this topic is, there's no shame admitting that you were previously speaking from a less informed place. I love this one because it's so true. There are times we say what we believe is a truth and then we find out that it's a non-truth. And so we need to go back and make that correction and say, I was mistaken, here's what I've learned. Let's move forward with this new knowledge.
So there's some really great ways now in our 21st century to reach out to adults. I would say the greatest one for me as, as a teacher when I'm reaching out to my guardians within my classroom is face-to-face -face or phone call. Those are my preferences. I think a lot can be lost in translation in email. And so I'm very particular about when I want to call or email and kind of the different situations. So for me, an email would be a quick thing like, oops, they left their homework here today, no big deal. There's no really lost translation in that, so emails are usually pretty safe, I can send those off. If I know a kid's had a tough day, had an accident at school, had a situation in the cafeteria with a friend that didn't go well, an interaction with another staff member in the building, that's gonna be an opportunity for me to reach out and, and make that call, or even go out to Carline and have an opportunity to say, hey, do you have a second? Can you pop in the building and make that face-to-face -face connection? This seems scary to a lot of new teachers and a lot of veteran teachers even. So what I'd say is take notes and practice. It seems silly, but it's anything we would do for anything else in life. We'd take notes, we'd practice what we need to do. You can do that same thing in these situations. You can always have extra people there as well. So face-to-face -face is great, emails are great. If you do do those phone calls, one thing I always suggest is having a nice little parent log. This is a good refresher for your brain because a lot of things happen in the school year that you can go back and look and say, wow, you know, I have called Timmy's parents or grandparents every Monday for the last six weeks. So is he staying at another house on the weekend? Are Mondays hard for him? It's a good way to kind of figure out patterns about a kids, but also just kind of have a safety net for you as an educator that you can look back at and say, okay, there's a pattern here, but I know I've documented what I've needed to say and what I've done with those guardians or parents. The last little bit I love is a handwritten letter. That is one of the most powerful things. Students love them, adults love them when they come home. It can be something simple about um, a little surprise they brought you in or flowers they picked at recess, which I know is not happening at the secondary level, but there's still fun, powerful connections you're making with your bigger kids too that you can find a way to just shoot them a little handwritten letter or to their adults at home. The two words, information and communication, are often used interchangeably, but they signify quite different things. Information is giving and communication is getting through. I'm gonna say that part again. Information is giving and communication is getting through. It's that connections piece that we're making here. So another form of means of communication we have are simple things like Twitter and Facebook. I use these in my classroom. Um, my classroom has a tight kind of lockdown Facebook page that only the guardians or parents can have access to. And I post our pictures in there. I post updates in there like field day is coming soon. Things like that that the parents or guardians need to know. It's a simple and easy way to make connections. And I put something in um, almost daily because it's just so easy to update a picture. Here's what we were doing in math or ask your kiddos about what we did in ELA. It's just a small, easy way to connect. Um, Twitter is the same thing. I have several parents who follow on there and it's a good way to kind of expand that communication even at home because in fourth and fifth grade where I teach, you know, most fourth and fifth graders are not coming home eager to share all the details of the day. So this gives their adults at home a great topic to bring up during dinner of, oh my goodness, I saw you built rockets today. And that connection piece then spreads into the household from your communication as well. I also use something called Canva. It's free to educators. You can use um, the paid version as well. And I do what's called a weekly lane. And it's just a newsletter that I send home every Friday for the next week sharing with their guardians what we're going to learn, what we're going to do, any field trips we might have, any upcoming birthdays, little celebrations we wanna share from our classroom, and then often pictures are accompanied as well. And that's one of my favorite things. It's just an easy tool for parents to constantly know what's going on within the classroom. Communication works for those who work at it. So I've got just a couple more tips I wanna run by you. I think this is important, especially as a new teacher or a teacher just trying to find their fitting. Perhaps a teacher who has a new family at home is kind of developing some internal office hours that you want to respect for yourself. So what I mean by that is if it is um, 5 p.m. each day that you want to shut off your phone and be present with your family and then maybe check it one more time before bed, 
that's something that works best for you, I would say then that's something you need to do not only for your mental health, but also just for your family being present with those there, um, taking time to spend time on your grading, your homework, your your family time, whatever you need to do in the evening needs your full attention. And so being respectful of, for this moment, I need to not be in communication. And I know that's easier said than done because I am a person who is constantly checking my email because I do wanna be in communication with my staff and parents and I want them to know they are valued. So you're gonna have to find something that works best for you and your family. You also really need to understand the family dynamics. You need to know if you have two parents in the household, if you have caregivers, if you have foster parents or grandparents, if you have same-sex parents, um, aunts and uncles raising the kids, those are kind of key to understanding the family dynamic. And when you email or write home, you wanna make sure you're using the correct pronouns and correct words to address that family. Some situations might require a third party necessary. So I want you to kind of think about when you're communicating, is this a situation where I'm going to need my administrator or my counselor or even just a co-teacher in here with me who is also working with this family because you might need someone else there to be a buffer or to be a support because there are times that there just is going to be hard conversations and that documentation piece can always be really important as well. It might be something that your counselor wants to slide into a file to move on to the next building or for your principal to have a copy of as well. Communication is the human connection. It's the key to personal and career success. This sounds kind of funny that it ties in personal and career, but if you think about that communication piece and and how humanly it is, how, how important that is to our human connection, that communication piece is what drives us forward. And so when parents feel valued and trusted by being connected to your classroom, that is going to bring about a level of personal success and ease for you, which will then translate to career success and ease as well. We're gonna just kind of wrap up here with one final tip and it's going back to that listening piece. It's important to remember that we are educators, but we are in a field of service. And sometimes parents just need the opportunity to be heard. They trust us so much each day, sending their students and children to us to be educated in a place where they might not have felt safe as a student or a learner. And so we need to give them that opportunity to feel valued and listened offer feedback where they feel necessary because they do know their students in a different light and so they might have great suggestions for us. After all, the art of conversation is the art of hearing as well as being heard. Thank you.